what you seek is what you'll find. This isn't just a physical principle. If I'm seeking for a tool inside of my garage, I'm going to find that tool, but it's also a spiritual principle. What you seek is what you're going to find. My name is Brian. Welcome to My Garage Bible Study. We're going to take a look at Colossians 3 today. Let me read a section, and then we'll talk about it. Here's what Colossians 3 verse 1 says. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek, that's the key word, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. I don't know if you've ever been baptized before or if you've ever seen someone get baptized as an adult or as a believer, not infant baptism, but as a believer. It's a core thing that everybody in the New Testament goes through who receives Christ. When you go under the water, it's known as the watery grave, and you are supposed to understand my sins are being drowned and I'm coming up to new life out of the water. And it's also known as the watery grave because we're replicating what Jesus did when he was placed in the tomb and he was raised with resurrection power. Now, right now in our world, in our lives, sin is not dead. It's not dead in that it's still having an effect on our lives. The old illustration is kind of like a chicken. You can chop off the head of a chicken, and it's dead for all intents and purposes, but it's still running around and making a lot of different difficult things. That's what it's like with us. When you receive Christ, and you have something like baptism happen, before God, your sin is dead. He doesn't see your sin. He's aware of it, but when he looks at you, your identity isn't sin. Your identity is Jesus. And yet, we still run around and squawk around. You can choose how you're going to run and how you are going to squawk. This verse tells us when you've been raised with Christ, we can make the decision to seek the things that are above where God is seated at the right hand. Well, what does that mean? means anything that's in heaven where God is, where there is the elimination of all that is harmful, the elimination of all sin, all those things, all those attributes, we can seek those things, or we can seek the things that are right here on this earth. I think, truth be told, we are seeking things on this earth, and it is hurting us, it is killing us, it is wearing us down. There's never been a generation of Americans that's more depressed and more anxious than we are right now. I say that because if you just look at the mental health statistics, if you look at the amount of medication that we're prescribing, if you look at just anecdotal evidence of when you get into a really real conversation with somebody and they say how they're doing, anxiety and depression is incredibly high. Now there's certainly sometimes a physiological it's thing that's happened with our brain chemistry that by God's grace and the ingenuity of human beings, there's medication that can help those of us who've got stuff that's broken that needs to be helped in the same way that if your arm's broken, your, your arm needs to be helped with a cast. But is it as many people taking those medications needing to take as those medications? I don't know. That's up between them and God. It's between you and God. But I want to give you something to think of right now. I got a friend of mine, John, John Mark Homer, wrote a book on this. It's pretty fascinating. And I'm basically going to, I'm going to paraphrase him. He says, anxiety or anxiety is when you imagine the future minus the power of Jesus. So if you want to be anxious, just imagine what might happen tomorrow, what might happen next week, next month, next year, next day. Imagine all the things that could happen if you're on your own and there's no Jesus. It could be that the, our raising anxiety and depression rates are corresponding with our raising, rising rates of atheism, our rising rates of agnosticism, our rising rates of, of checking none when we go to the hospital in terms of your religious affiliation, our decreasing rates of doing things like attending church. The last poll I saw was I think 1.7 times. The person who says that they're a Christian averages 1.7 times a month going to church. Where is our mind being set 
if we're not in an environment that's calling us to think about things that are above and beyond. You and I have to make an intentional decision what we want to seek. If we want to seek things that are wrong, I'm telling you what, you'll endlessly find them. If you want to seek things to be stressed out about, you will endlessly find them. Endlessly. It, it won't end. If you want to seek things to be angry about, look, you will never run dry, but it will keep going and going and going. In the Roman Empire, I've been over to Rome a couple of times and they had water that was piped all over the city. Amazing, amazing stuff that took place in Rome with their ingenuity. Problem was to go around the tough rocks and all that stuff, they needed a malleable pipe. What was that? That was lead. So they were becoming unhealthy while they were drinking willfully and voraciously out of a tainted water source. If you're not careful, you have to recognize we are, taint, we are drinking willfully and voraciously out of tainted water sources that have no interest in the heavenly realm, have no interest in the values that are seated beside Christ. I'm talking here about social media, mass media. I'm, I'm pro mass media. I'm pro Netflix. I'm pro, I'm pro social media. In fact, you should follow me on social media right now, at Brian Tome. You should do it. I, I'm pro, I have to, we just have to recognize that those things are funneling into our mind, and we are, if we're not seeking it, our mind is finding, because it's being funneled into our mind, endless judgmentalism, endless hate, endless fear, endless worry, endless bad information that would lead a sane person when getting all that endless bad information to be depressed and to be anxious. That's the course of this world. But if you're raised with Christ, you have a different power in you. God doesn't look at you that way. But are we looking that way? If God looks at us a specific way, we can return the favor by looking His way as it relates to all of these things. And then this verse gives us examples of, of how exactly we would do that. First of all, I recognize in verse 3, we have died and our life is hidden in God. So if you feel guilt, if you feel shame, one thing to do if you feel guilt is you have to ask yourself, am I guilty? <laughs> am I guilty? Because sometimes we feel guilt because it's the conviction of God that we have to deal with things. I meet folks who just don't understand that. They feel like the, the goal of spirituality is to not feel guilty. No, part of what the Holy Spirit does is He convicts. He reminds us of things that Jesus said that we're not doing. So when we feel that way, we have to ask ourselves, what's to say about our spiritual condition? Is God trying to talk to me about a correction of repentance. The other thing that happens as these things are coming into my mind and as I feel guilt or shame, sometimes we feel guilt and shame because the world is piping into our mind guilt and shame. The Holy Spirit isn't piping in. The world is. We have to remember this first, that my life is hidden in Christ. That is when God looks at me, he sees Jesus because my life is wrapped around him. He doesn't see me in all my problems, though he understands that I have problems. He's working with me in those problems, but that's not my identity. My identity is Jesus. And so when there's guilt and there's shame that could lead to anxiety and it can lead to depression, you always have one of two sources for it, one of two things. It's either repentance, is there something here I need to repent of, or two, Am I being deluded by the ways of the world? And do I need to right-size my mind of having my life hid with Christ? This is, these are very, very tough times for us. A lot of us are doing really well financially or doing well in our jobs or doing well by the metrics. But I'll tell you, man, all the statistics is that mentally we are not doing well. Emotionally, we are not doing well. It's why we are at each other all the time. And we should expect, I should expect, a world that has no hope, that does not see Christ in the future that they're imagining, does not see the power of Christ in their future, I would expect them to have rampant levels of mental issues. Us, those of us who have mental issues because we have perspective issues, those of us who have mental issues because we're not seeking the right thing, we've got to choose to grab our minds and seek the things that are above and see those things that are above in this world. Not seek going to heaven today like that, but seek the heavenly characteristics of love, of grace, of second chances, of beauty, and of harmony. You seek those things, and those things you'll find. 
You seek ways to be angry, you'll find it every single time and you'll get angry and anxiety will be right on its doorstep because you're angry about something, something's not being solved and I always get anxious about it. And you're anxious long enough, you're gonna feel down and depression is gonna follow along. And where did it start? Didn't start with the depression or the anxiety, it started with what we're seeking, with what we're intentionally doing with our mind. Your life is hidden in Christ. He is pleased with you and he loves you. You think on that, you seek that, and wait for your life to change. God, I am uh, so appreciative of you being the great lifter of my eyes, the lifter of my gaze. Thank you for elevating my game, elevating my eyes to see you. And we want to see you, and we choose to see you and seek you in ways we wouldn't have before we got this scriptural reorientation. I pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, thanks for coming. Great being with you. We're going to pick up here in Colossians again next week on my, my, not yours, my garage Bible study.